The Lord be with you. Of all of the 365 days of the year, the hardest of them all for me as a pastor is December 26th. Let me tell you why. The great hymns tell us that the first Christmas that night in Bethlehem was a holy night. There was a thrill of hope, a weary world. Can you relate to those words? A weary world rejoiced. A new and glorious morn had broken. It was a night so divine that all anyone could do was fall to their knees and listen to the music of angels. And then comes December 26th. As the sun rises on this new day, everything looks boringly normal, like nothing unusual has happened. Even worse, like something is over. The glory and the wonder of the previous day seems lost. The house might be trashed, wrapping paper stuffed into garbage bags, bows saved for next year's presents, clothes that don't fit lay piled up on the sofa, the refrigerator overflows with leftovers, the majestic advent and Christmas Eve worship experiences are done for another year, the advent wreath and the Christmas tree will be taken down and stored until needed again, family is on their way home, Decorations are on their way back into boxes. Most of us are already thinking about all we have waiting for us when we go back to work. As Edwin Muir describes, it seems that on December 6th, we live in, quote, the world rolled back into its place, unquote. I have even heard Christians, many, many of them through the years, say, finally, now things can get back to normal. So where did all that majesty of Christmas go? Only 24 hours of Christmas, and then we are grateful that it is over, thankful that the world rolls back into its place. Is that all we are left with on December 26th? A normal life in a normal world? Is that really what we want from the December 26th of our lives? Maybe that is the way it was on the first Christmas too. Shepherds went back to their fields. The animals left the stable to graze in the fields. Angels flew back to heaven. Most people in Bethlehem didn't have a clue that they were there in the same city when the most monumental event of human history occurred. They were so close when God was born a baby, and only a handful of people knew. The world barely stirred. For most people, it was just another day of business as usual registering for the census and getting back to work. December 26th not so subtly asks the question, what's left of the glory of Christmas? December 26th can be such a letdown. But wait, I read a poem this week that changed my entire outlook. It reminded me that Christmas is not about shepherds or stables and mangers or stars and magi or trees and decorations and gifts and parties, even ones with less than 10 people in attendance wearing masks outdoors. Praise God for Christmas. Praise him for the incarnation, for the word made flesh. I will not sing of shepherds watching flocks on frosty nights or angel choristers. I will not sing of a stable there in Bethlehem or lowing oxen, wise men trailing star with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Tonight I will sing praise to the Father who stood on heaven's threshold and said farewell to his son as he stepped across the stars to Bethlehem and Jerusalem. 
and I will sing praise to the infinite, eternal Son, who became most finite, a baby who would one day be executed for my crime. Praise him in the heavens, praise him in the stable, praise him in my heart. So put those decorations back in their boxes and stick them in the attic or garage when December 26th gets here. Take down the manger scenes, the Christmas trees, the stockings, throw away the torn wrapping paper, and start your diet because, well, we all know why, don't we? But please, please, when we journey through Advent to the manger, please, on December 26th, don't be grateful that all that Christmas stuff is finally over. The simple truth is, if your life goes back to normal on December 26th, then you haven't done Christmas right. I pray that by the time we get there, I pray that we all will have a very merry December 26th that makes the other 364 days of the year anything but normal. Amen. <laughs>